Hey everybody, in this lecture I'm going to be talking about the use of Piskel for making pixel art. Um, Piskel is a free website where you can use the app directly in the website. Uh, there is a download version that you can grab for desktop if you want to, offline version right down here. But they even recommend that you use the in-browser version as it is primarily what they designed this for and the one that runs better. Uh, but I do have the downloaded version. The benefit, you can just take it anywhere and you don't have to have a uh, internet connection. At the top you can see the site address, piskelapp.com, that is P-I-S-K-E-L uh, app.com. Um, if we create Sprite, then we can go right to the interface. Here it is. Uh, there is the ability to sign in. You don't have to sign in. That's just an option if you want to save your work locally here on the site. Uh, but if you want to export your work as a file that you take with you, that's what I prefer then there are options for that over in the right hand menu. So if we take a look, this is a pretty simple interface. We've got a large drawing area. The default uh, tool that we've got selected on the left here is the pen tool. If we click, we can draw just like that. And if we want to erase, we have an eraser tool, two buttons down, and it gets rid of those pixels. Uh, since this is designed for pixel art, then it's an anti-alias uh, free drawing application all of the pixels are just either on or off whatever the color might be uh, and they have a number of tools that make it really convenient for doing pixel art so I'm going to go through those features really quick here uh, the second tool in the top row here so we've got pen on the left you can see that the tooltip pops up with the letter P as the shortcut um, just to the right of that we have the vertical mirror pen so if you wanted to do characters or patterns or something like that then this will mirror it down the center line here uh, and all of the tooltips give you additional options so for instance this one says if I hold down control I can use the horizontal axis if I use shift then I can use the horizontal and vertical so for control then I'm mirroring top to bottom instead of left right and if I do shift then we're doing all four corners it's getting a little hard to see but if I switch to a new color hold shift oops, switch to a new color not shifting to a new color. There we go. Okay, I had to close the window somehow. Uh, then I hold shift. Now we're doing all four quadrants at the same time. Okay, So that's a pretty nice feature. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose the eraser tool. Um, speaking of these two tools, pen and eraser, we have size options across the top here. So I can choose a number four size for the eraser. Uh, but you can use the same shortcuts as Photoshop, the bracket keys right next to the letter P. The right hand key will make it larger and it can go beyond what's listed here. And the left hand bracket will make it smaller. Click it a few times, you'll see it go back to one eventually. Same thing with the pen. Here's a number one size brush. Tap it a couple times and here is a larger size brush. Okay. Uh, by the way, you can use the pen with this application if you want to, a tablet or any sort of pressure sensitive device but it doesn't have any pressure sensitive features so it's not really useful unless you just want to be able to move your hand with more coordination uh, if I close off a space like this I can choose a different color if I want to we can use the bucket tool right here to fill any enclosed space including the background if we want to uh, if we do control Z we can undo just like in Photoshop uh, Z alone though goes for the shape selection tool uh, I actually don't know what that one is. Drab, drag the selection to move it. Okay, so ah, it will it will select as if it was a paint bucket. So anything connected, it will select. That's a feature I actually hadn't used before. So uh, let's see. We've got paint all pixels of same color. So this is a, a specialty sort of thing. Uh, if I want to color pick, we can do the same shortcut as in Photoshop, which is Alt. Hold down Alt, click a pixel, it will select that color. Hold down Alt, it will even pick transparent. So that makes it effectively like an eraser. So I'm going to just put a few shapes around. And then also of this other color. So I can demonstrate the use of this. So now paint all pixels of the same color. I'll choose something yellow. And now if I were to click on the red, it should paint all the red yellow or all the green yellow. So there we go, all the green turned yellow, now all the red turned yellow. Now that they're all the same color, if I fill any of it, all of it will change color again. 
So that's particularly useful because pixel art often uh, uses a low number of colors, a very tight palette. Uh, you can actually see the palette you currently have over here. Um, and so if you want to recolor something or just tune the color balance a little bit, that makes this a very useful feature. We've gone over the eraser tool. Uh, here we have the stroke tool. What the stroke tool will do is allow you to click and drag to make a straight line in any direction, which is really nice. Um, pixel art has a number of kind of picky rules about what you should do when creating lines like uh, we try to aspire to patterns that are completely consistent such as uh, two, 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 two going all the way across like this or one up one down or one over one down like this uh, if you get sawtooth kind of patterns like this that's usually frowned upon in good pixel art um, but that's beside the usefulness of this it's pretty nice to be able to draw lines like that We've got shape tools, so here's a rectangle. Uh, you can hold shift just like in Photoshop to keep a one-to-one -one ratio. So here's without, I can drag any shape I want. And if I hold down shift, I get a perfect square. Circle, same thing. If I click and drag, I will get an ellipse or hold shift, I will get a circle. Just like that. Uh, the move tool, so we've got just the basic move tool will move whatever I've drawn all over the place. This can actually go off of the stage. So be careful about that. Uh, it says control to apply to all layers. We haven't gone through layers yet, but we can have multiple layers. If we want to move them all, we hold control. Shift apply to all frames. We also have animation capability. We could move the entire animating uh, document over to one side of the canvas or somewhere else. And then alt wrap the canvas borders. So that's a cool one, uh, particularly if you're trying to make a tiling repeatable pattern. If I hold Alt, then anything I move off will come right back on again on the other side. So we don't lose any pixels. We're just shifting them over, which is kind of a neat thing to do. Shape selection we did demonstrate just a moment ago. Um, it says we can Control C to copy the selected area, Control V to paste the copied area, and Shift to move the content. So that's very much like Photoshop and a number of other uh, different programs. So let's see. Actually, I'm not sure how it's determining that's the selection it wants to make right now. It's very odd. So it is drawing a new selection area each time I click, and then I can move that small selection area somewhere. But I'm not holding any keys. Let's hold Shift to see what mo what happens. OK, now it's taking and placing the content. I think I have to hit Enter to confirm it. So let's try that again. So I'm going to select this area and I can't add to that selection. So it seems like just one contiguous color area is what it'll allow me to select. So for instance, this rectangle. Now if I hold Shift, I can move the rectangle. Uh, but if I let go, nothing has happened yet. I have to hit Enter to confirm the selection. So a little bit of an oddball tool. I'm not really sure if I like that entirely. Um, I would probably just prefer to use the rectangular selection or the lasso selection, but it's there if you need it. Uh, rectangular selection. We can grab a selection like this. This is what a selection looks like as opposed to the marching ants that we have in Photoshop. And then according to the tooltip, copy is control C, V is control pay, or control C, V is pasting, and shifting is moving the content. So very similar to what we already had in Photoshop. And enter to confirm. Uh, lasso selection, we can draw a particular shape like this. Now I've selected that and I can move it around enter and I'll just demonstrate cutting and pasting once uh, so if I control C and then control V here I have a second copy of what I'd selected there place it over here hit enter um, Wow didn't seem to actually paste let me try that one more time copy the selected area paste the copied area right okay so let's try it one more time so control or did it say shift No, it says control so control C so that should be copied now. Control, maybe you have to move first. V, oh, you have to move it first. It's like a stamp. Well, that's a little bit strange, but okay. So yeah, I moved it, then hit Control V, and it's pasting it wherever I'm moving it. To deselect, kind of similar to Photoshop, if you just single click with any of these selection tools, they'll tend to deselect. Uh, the rectangle tool seemed to actually click a single spot. But I think you can also click off the canvas out here to deselect each time. Okay. Uh, I'm actually going to, because this is getting very messy, grab all of this 
and delete it. So I just hit keyboard delete and then clicked outside. And I'll make a, a new rectangle or two of different colors to continue demonstrating. Do like this and maybe a circle as well. Okay. So then we've got the lighten tool. So we can darken or lighten with this. So this would be for getting additional shades. So if I drag on this yellow or this green, you can see that as I'm just clicking and dragging, they're getting lighter and lighter and lighter. They're actually just kind of continually lighten, lightening the more I hold and move. There we go. So if you kind of just swizzle it around in the same spot, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. A single click or two clicks, three clicks, and we can get definite shades. Then it said shift, or sorry, control to darken. We can do the same thing going the other way. And then finally, it just says shift to apply only once per pixel. OK, so this could be helpful that during this hold of my mouse button, I'm just holding down. It's not continually applying over and over to these same pixels. So that could be a little bit more controlled. Okay. Dithering tool. OK, dithering is really interesting. Um, there is a pattern, or actually a number of different patterns in pixel art that will allow you to create the appearance of shading. So I'm going to pick like yellow for this. And I'm just going to start clicking and dragging over here. What it does is it refuses to fill in every second pixel. So it's creating a checkerboard pattern. So that can be really useful if you want to create um, a sort of shaded effect. Um, a little bit hard to imagine if you haven't done a lot of, photo of uh, pixel art before. But if you have, then that's, that's a pretty exciting thing because it allows you to move a lot faster than you normally would have been able. Finally, the color picker, which you don't actually ever have to select directly, but if you do, you can grab exactly whatever pixel you're hovering over, or if you have the pen tool selected, you can just hold down Alt and click, and it will select whatever color is directly underneath your tool. Okay. Uh, just like in Photoshop, we have two colors that we have selected, uh, and you can flip them with the X key, or this little arrow going back and forth. So the second one is set to transparency right now by default. But if I flip this, select green, and I have my pen, I can paint in green, hit X, paint in yellow, hit X, paint in green. And none of this should affect the eraser tool. So all that seems to still be working just fine. All right. Down in the lower left-hand corner, there's this keyboard icon, which will tell you the full list of shortcuts if you want to know every single one of them. It does scroll, so be aware of that in case you want all of the details. So that's it for the tool set and how you would draw inside of Piscal. Uh, in the next section, I'm going to show you how we would use the layers, transform palettes, and the animation features.